Patrick Ewing is the biggest difference in the New York Knicks. I think he's a marvelous player. I think he's going to chase the game around for him. He's going to be a force in the NBA. I'm looking forward to a good season. Basketball has reached new levels of popularity with stars like magnificent Larry Bird, sensational Michael Jordan, and ageless Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And now another star is on the horizon, Patrick Ewing. College basketball's dominant performer begins his NBA career. decade, Julius Irving's remarkable career has paralleled the success of the Philadelphia 76ers, which includes a world title. Facing what could be his final season, the doctor is primed for one last campaign. Matt Gukas begins his first year as head coach, and while the Sixers boast familiar names, age may be their biggest enemy. So here in the shadow of the Twin Towers, the young Knicks of Patrick Ewing begin their climb while the veteran 76ers look to remain among the NBA's elite. Madison Square Garden has been sold out for quite some time. It hasn't been that way in recent years, but it's a new era perhaps as the Philadelphia 76ers take on the New York Knicks. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, and welcome to the premier edition of the NBA on CBS and a big day of sports on CBS. Later today, college football, a Big Ten battle between Ohio State and Minnesota. But this is the 40th season of the NBA kicking off this weekend, and it is the long-awaited debut of Patrick Ewing, the highest-paid rookie ever to come into the league, a great star at Georgetown, and a big center who is expected to make an imprint on this league for many years to come. And he is getting perhaps the most grueling test of all in his first game going against Moses Malone who's won the NBA rebounding title five years in a row and Patrick Ewing will find out how tough it can be at both ends of the court against Moses Malone this afternoon well there's been a reawakening of basketball interest in New York they haven't won a title here since 1973 but the fans have come out there's a lot of interest in Patrick Ewing and the impact of this rookie can be felt all over for more on that my colleague Pat O'Brien and it's center number 33, seven feet from Georgetown, Patrick Ewing. And with that introduction, the Patrick Ewing era began here in New York City, where the fans are hoping the glory days will return. But before Ewing even put on his jersey, the impact of the Ewing era was felt not only in the NBA, but here in the financial community. Patrick Ewing uh, represents uh, a new force in our marketplace. He's going to have the same kind of impact uh, on our market uh, as he's going to have in the NBA. The song says if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Well, the New York fans aren't waiting to see if Ewing will make it. Just the thought has made Knicks tickets the hottest in town. Sales have almost doubled with his arrival. Please have three tickets for Thursday evening, December 12th, New Jersey Nets against the uh, Knicks. I'll tell you how tickets are. We can't get to Busher on the phone to get free tickets. And last year, he used to call us and beg us to come to games. But, but this year, we, in fact, we're trying to call him now. You can't, you can't get him on the phone. General Manager Dave DeBusher does not have a lot of extra tickets, which is a problem he could live with. Meantime, it seems that everything with the Ewing name or number 33 is selling big. Anytime you have a player who is a personality, who, uh, who affects his team competitively, and who has generated the kind of publicity that Patrick Ewing has, he's going to probably draw very well at home and on the road so long as the team is competitive. Are you going to go to the Nick games this year? Uh, I have to tell you right up front that I'm not a jock. <laughs> Well, there's one man in New York who won't be needing tickets to the Knicks this year, won't be asking for those tickets. 
It has been a rough initiation for Patrick Ewing in preseason so far. He has been fined twice, ejected on two occasions. He has gotten into scraps wherever he has gone and fouled out in three separate games. And the culmination of all of his problems occurred a week ago in a preseason game against Indiana. Watch the elbow to Steve Stepanovich of the Indiana Pacers and watch what Stepanovich does back to Ewing. This was the last of the scraps that Ewing was involved in. Since then, Stepanovich has been fined $1,000. Ewing fined $1,500. Now, the Knicks management told Patrick not to talk about the fight or the incident. He has no comment. The Knicks are protesting, but privately, Patrick Ewing is seething over what he considers to be an incredible fine of $1,500 for that incident indeed. In any event, he's getting ready for the first game. We had a chance to talk with him the other day. I, I came to the league thinking I'm going to play as hard as I possibly can, um, do the best that I can. That's it. I'm not thinking about getting any scrap. Like I said before, I'm not a fighter. I'm a basketball player. That's what they pay me for, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play hard and um, do the best that I can to help New York to win. Why do you think these things have happened so far in the preseason? I don't know. I don't wish to even get into that. Describe the temperament of Patrick Ewing. Do you have a temper? No, I don't think I have a temper. I'm, like, I'm, I'm a human just like everybody else. Everybody has their limits, a point that, you know, you only can go so far. Your feelings of the, of the media and having to ask, answer questions that come your way now. I always answer questions that came my way. It depends on what question they are. You know, I'm still going to be the same Patrick Ewing that was at Georgetown. A lot of people say I was sheltered. I was never sheltered. Um, it was my decision to uh, do as few interviews as possible. I wanted to get my education. That was very important to me. If I had gave, given everybody an interview every time they asked me, I wouldn't have graduated. Then everybody would say, oh, <laughs> he didn't graduate. He's just a dumb jock, you know, so you can't win for losing. <laughs> you know, I can't let what people think of me, you know, bother me, you know, or I wouldn't be effective of what I do. So I just block it out, you know, as long as my friends and family know you know, the way I am, and then everything is fine. Everything be fine. We're pleased to have Tommy Heinsohn back as our analyst for the third straight year. Tommy, Bill Russell broke in when you were playing with the Celtics. What are your views of the Ewing situation and the Knicks in particular? Well, Dick, I think Patrick Ewing is going to be an absolutely sensational player. He's got the size, the speed, and the fire in his eye. You know, a couple of years ago, Ralph Sampson broke into the NBA, and a big question mark surrounding him was his aggressiveness. Would he really be out there battling? No question about Patrick Ewing. He's got it. The Knicks, however, are without three. Three of their real big players, Bill Cartwright and Bernard King with injuries and an unsigned Louis Orr. They need these players or similar type players to take the pressure off Patrick Ewing. Too much may be expected of him too early. Tommy, a lot of people think the Philadelphia 76ers may not challenge the Celtics as well as they have in the past. They have a lot of age. They have a new coach in Matt Gukas and a lot of questions. What is your assessment of the Sixers? Well, I think the Sixers, Dick, perhaps have a team with a lot of names, but maybe no legs. There are three big question marks on this ball club around the nucleus of a team that really was a top echelon ball club. And that revolves around Andrew Tony, who has been troubled with some ankle injuries to the point where some people are questioning whether he has the heart and desire to play this game any longer. It could put pressure on the older ball players that they would like to really slide into old age, Dr. J and Bobby Jones. They may be in a catch-22 situation where they're expecting a lot more out of Dr. J and Bobby Jones than possible. A quick thought of the Moses Malone-Patrick Ewing matchup today. I'm going to be smiling. Watch that one. Dick. Body against body. I hope the kid doesn't foul out. All right. Right now, the New York Knicks are being introduced. They're saving the best for last. And the long-awaited debut of Patrick Number Ewing two, is Star. about to take on the next echelon. Number four, Daryl Walker. And at center, number 33, Patrick Ewing. The next trainer is Mike Saunders. The assistant coaches, Bob Hill and Richie Adubato. And the Knicks head coach, The NBA on CBS. Today's game from Madison Square Garden is sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less.
Chic Disposable, the disposable razor made to stay sharp and shave close. Shave after shave after shave. Air Jordan, basketball by Nike. And by Dodge, a performance revolution, an American revolution. Back at Madison Square Garden, you'll notice Paul Thompson is starting for Andrew Toney at guard for Philadelphia, and a rookie, Gerald Wilkins, opens it quick forward for the Knicks. Ewing Malone will jump it up. The NBA is underway here in New York for 1985 and 86 Philadelphia controls. Then he go to Paul Thompson early to see whether he can stick it from the outside. And that's what the Knicks do very well, Tommy. Defensively, Sparrow takes it to the hoop and draws the foul. Just what Gooby Brown wants. This ball club has been having a lot of offensive trouble, Dick. During the exhibition game, scoring points and then trying to find a way to get up over 100 points on a regular basis. We know one thing, that uh, Hubie expects Ewing and Cummings to play close to 40 minutes, and he has to get 20 points apiece from them and then points from elsewhere. So he may have to scratch and scrap a lot to get them. Well, they have no real proven 20-point scorers now that Bernard King is no longer in the lineup. And the next closest guy was Cartwright, and now they're going to rely on Ewing to try and do that tough assignment. Rory Sparrow, who had a terrific preseason, misses both free throws. And now the Knicks playing a half-court pressure defense, trapping. Malone double-teamed by Ewing and Cummings, turns it over. Darrell Walker, in his third year, misses, and Ewing says hello to the NBA. Moses just got introduced to Patrick Ewing. Maurice Cheeks misses, and here come the Knicks again with Wilkins, the rookie, who is the younger brother of Dominique Wilkins of the Atlanta Hawks. They call him Little Neek. Playing out of position, really, should be a guard, but opening up at forward. Ewing crashing the boards of the Knicks and coming. And then call an offensive foul against Darrell Walker. We're going to see Patrick Ewing coming from the inside. Mo Moses doesn't get out jumped too often, so he doesn't bother to block a lot of guys out, but he better start on Ewing. That's a loose ball foul. Darrell Walker. Here's Thompson outside, as Tommy said. He's a good outside shooter, was with Milwaukee, did not play much of last year, a 6-6 forward. And they're going to need his outside scoring, and it's all tied at two. Well, they want to hit the outside shot to keep the middle open to get the ball to Moses a little bit. Cheeks is on Rory Sparrow, who's looking for Ewing. Wilkins guarded by the man he called his idol, Julius Irving. Ewing with a great fake on Malone. Four points for Patrick. What a move that was for a rookie. Charles Barkley, who is a lot more confident coming into his second year. They expect more points from him, too. Ewing went after the ball, and Malone goes in and scores. Well, it may end up in this first quarter. One center going at the, the other one. And the Six is hoping they can get some fouls on Ewing, but it's not happening yet. The Knicks are going to Ewing every chance they can down the court. Wilkins at the top. Sparrow against Cheeks, coming, setting a screen. Barkley the rebound, and here come the Sixers. Matt Gukas wants them to run more this year. Off of a fine defense. Knicks are scrappy. They're all in the faces of the 76ers in the opening moment. Matt Kukas wants the Sixers to run a lot more than they have the last two seasons. Walker fouls Julius Irving. It was attempted to shoot, and the doctor will go to the line. There's Matt Kukas, who was a broadcaster and an assistant at Philadelphia. Now, this is not a rookie move against a veteran player like Moses. Little up fake lifts Moses, and a nice down-on-the-floor move, and... Great presence and patience to elude the double team of Cheeks. Smart move. Trent Tucker, whose asset is an outside shooter, replaces Darrell Walker, who has two personal fouls, and getting some words of advice from Hubie Brown. But here's the doctor in his 15th pro year, and he looks as good a shape as he's ever been, Tommy. Well, he went through their whole summer program trying to uh, make sure that he'd come in ready to fly, and it looks like he is. Man is over 27,000 points, third best in NBA history. Well, he's a key guy for this ball club this year. They might have to rely on him a lot more than they probably intended to. 
Parker is guarded by Thompson. Two outside shooters defending each other. Ewing comes out on high. Cummings maybe out of his range a bit. Ewing battling for the offensive rebound and a foul against Philadelphia. A loose ball foul has been called against Moses Malone. That's his first. This man has never fouled out of a game in his NBA career. Well, here's Moses trying to block him out, but the good agility of, of Ewing and the leaping ability allows him to get over Moses. Gerald Wilkins misses outside. Malone gets the rebound. Sixers lead it 6-4, to four, under nine minutes to go in the first period. The dock. Good position inside by Malone. And his second effort counts, and that's what Malone does best. A little inexperience that time by Ewing to allow Moses to get that good post position. Sparrow looking the coming side. Barkley is guarding Cummings. And Cummings, who had to play too many games at center. He's 6'9", a tough, hard-nosed performer. Former Buck and Dallas Maverick makes it 8-6. to six. They isolate Irving against Wilkins, the rookie. Malone out of nowhere. Gets the rebound and the basket. Now Ewing didn't block him out that time. Four minutes gone by here. Philadelphia out shooting the Knicks so far. Tucker looking for Ewing. Ewing is shot every time he had the ball, which is what you want him to do. Barkley the rebound. That's three rebounds for Barkley. go to the line. Well, he looks like a spry kid out there, and it looks like that Julius Irving has been kind of rejuvenated. Well, one of the things you want to look for in the course of this ball game to see if Dr. J is going to be able to really perform very well for this club is how high he gets up and whether he gets any of those high flyers. That was the hallmark of this ball club for years, the stuff shots. So Gerald Wilkins, who was the 47th pick in the draft out of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, and the uh, Wilkins should be a big guard. Instead, he has to play small forward. Louis Orr is signed and comes back, and Bernard King makes a comeback, and Wilkins can play his natural position. One out of two for the doctor and a five-point Philadelphia lead. Uh, look at Cheeks right up there on Sparrow. They're going to press him a little bit, make it tough to bring the ball up. Ewing on the other side. First time he's gotten the ball at that side. Triple team that loses it. Two on one for Philadelphia, and Maurice Cheeks lays it in. That's Philadelphia brand of basketball. Good defense produces easy baskets. None do it, do it better than Philadelphia. They've outscored the Knicks now 11 to 2, and right now Hubie Brown doesn't want things to get out of hand. He feels if the Knicks can stay in the game going into the second half, they have a chance. Timeout, 7 12 remaining. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, along with Pat O'Brien, watching this man in his debut. And a good sign. He has yet to pick up a personal foul, and they're trying to go and try and foul him out of the game by going to Moses a lot. Trent Tucker coming off the screen. This is the outside shot, and Barkley goes high for the rebound. You'll see him play both forward positions this year. Strong forward and quick. Malone blocked from behind by Cummings. Hubie Brown has the Knicks always playing superb defense. If he gets enough points, he can beat anyone, including Philadelphia. Sparrow going in and gets the layup. All right, I wanted Moses this year to be a little bit more dominating as a shot blocker, and he let Sparrow slip in there. Six and a half minutes remaining, first period. Malone gets it in close. Ewing with help from Wilkins, and Trent Tucker can't save it for the New York Knicks. They help Ewing very well, but watch Pat Cummings on defense here. Boy, he comes from out of nowhere, and watch Pat Cummings from behind. You've got to be alert, even when you're taking that fall away, that you're not falling away into somebody ready to get his hand on the ball. Talk about Moses Malone being a lunch pail kind of player. So is Pat Cummings as Julius Irving gets set to inbound. Well, the Knicks are playing de team defense against Moses Malone at this stage to help Patrick Ewing a little bit, particularly when he's in the low post. They're getting down doubling him time. quick. Problem momentarily with the, the clock. Board. That's Hugh Evans, one of the two officials working this game. Tommy Nunez is the other official. The rebounding story, focusing on Malone and Ewing. Philadelphia has that edge, two to one. They find Thompson. Trent Tucker's a pretty good defensive player, and Cummings switches off nicely, leaving Maurice Cheeks open. Philadelphia. 
Philadelphia will have a new clock now. Cheeks has been having a little shooting problems during these exhibition games. He's gotten off to a slow start so far. Yep. But no one doubts that he'll come back. Barkley, wild shot. Inside Malone, and they call the foul. No one is more relentless on the offensive glass than Moses Malone, and he showed why. Well, it's a real test for the selection of uh, blocking shots by Patrick Ewing. If you let him, like Ewing is doing right now, uh, all along, Moses is going to take that advantage and slip inside you. So you got to really be selective when you're going to go block shots and when you're going to block Moses out. Trent Tucker with his first personal foul. Malone now has seven points and four rebounds. I wonder what his feeling is coming into this game against the much heralded Ewing. Listen, when an old pro like Moses comes out, he wants to establish that he's been around a long time. Forget the kid, it's me here. Tucker steps on the line, and so the Knicks turn it over. And it's been a quiet capacity crowd so far at Madison Square Garden. But you'll be hearing Hubie Brown's voice if it gets awfully quiet. You hear it over the roars. Well, the Knicks rely so much on set offense that they're having problems getting it going. 5.48 to go, first period. Ewing over Wilkins. Wilkins played with body tough with him. But there's Barkley with the offensive rebound, and now Malone. It's Knicks ball as Malone knocks it out of bounds. Dukas, who was a broadcaster like Pat Riley was, and then an assistant coach following the same trail in his first year after Billy Cunningham quit after eight years. What a great job he did. We wish him well. Gerald Wilson. The Knicks are not able to hit anything from perimeter. Sixers control. The Knicks have scored only eight points with 5.15 to go in the first. Somebody was colorblind on that fumbled rebound with two red jerseys going at each other. And Gerald Wilkins is called for the foul. That's his second personal foul. Uh, here's a rookie that they're counting on, and immediately he's got some foul problems. Brings in Ernie Grunfeld off the bench. They're going to count on Grunfeld's stability as uh, Little Neek. Big Neek, of course, is Dominique, who's been moved to guard. Grunfeld. Grunfeld Dick is an excellent uh, press defensive player. He gets out there in the passing lanes and has good anticipation. But he's kind of a streaky offensive player. But he does have the experience, and uh, perhaps they can use that experience right now to climb back into this thing a little bit. Grunfeld is particularly effective on the defense. Even though he doesn't have the foot speed, he plays passing lanes extremely well. And they're going to call Maurice Cheeks with the foul. Philadelphia leading by nine points right now, their biggest lead of the game, and Mo Cheeks. No longer can you say this man is underrated. He's a great one. The Knicks already over the limit in fouls. Philadelphia has three team fouls. Five minutes to go. Ewing. Patrick Ewing has six of the Knicks, ten points. They are really trying to establish his offensive game here, but nobody else. Others have had some chances with some shots, but they haven't dropped. Double team on Malone with Tucker and Ewing. Thompson missing outside, and Cummings the rebound. Sixers lead by seven. Cheeks is all over the court defensively. Cummings working against the doctor. Ewing trying to crash the boards, but Malone had good position. He had to come over the top for that, and now seven boards for Big Mo. Good defense that time by the Knicks to slow down the break. Barkley goes in, and he'll be called with the offensive foul. Doesn't like it, but that's the way it is. Uh, he hasn't gotten his game together yet. Having an excellent preseason exhibition. Brown, he uh, scored a lot of points. They thought he's coming. They want him to score more points as the season goes along. Still having some problems with his emotions. Time to get out of hand. Cummings gets the basket. No, now they say no basket. But Pat Cummings was fouled. And we'll go to the line. The foul is on Maurice Cheeks. That's the second foul on Mo. Well, Barkley's trying to get out into the passing lane, something he had difficulty doing last year, but they're trying to work him by getting it to Cummings the last couple of trips up the floor. But he looks like he's got a little bit better understanding of what he's supposed to do when they're taking him in a low post. Sedale three, now the third guard, with Clint Richardson having been traded to Indiana, replaces Maurice Cheeks. He's had a good... More relaxed. And in his third year out of West Virginia Tech... 
He's quick, can play defense, and they need that outside shooting from him. Yeah, they're going to count on him uh, more and more, and they have a lot of confidence in him. So he's a hard, hard worker. Now, this is very important that they are uh, marking blue pen on the uh, shoe <laughs> of Gerald Wilkins. Uh, well, the Boston Celtics are wearing black high tops, and Portland is wearing red high tops, and I don't know how many people like that who are wearing it. Giving him his autograph on a sneaker. What a step. Cummings with the free throws, and again, a five-point ball game. Cummings and Ewing have 10 of the Knicks' 12 points. All Thompson. And here comes that press of the Knicks. It takes you out of your normal offense. Thompson for three. Misses, and Malone. The ball bounces back to Cummings. Knicks can't break as the doctor got a piece of that. Trying to cut the lead down to three with 3.32 to go and a long-range shot by Tucker misses. They're going to call Ernie Grunfeld with the foul. Let's see. And a loose ball foul on the only NBA player who was born in Romania. Ernie Grunfeld, who nearly went to play in Israel this year, came back to the Knicks. Here's a Knicks fast break opportunity as Moses misjudges it. Look at, they come down quickly. Cummings tries to get it out, does, and then they off and they pull it up. They really don't push it hard to the basket. They don't take advantage of the defense not being totally set up. They're not really a fast break ball club, the Knicks. And Julia Serving going to the line, and uh, that's not been their style. You think running is important. In fact, a lot of clubs have begin to run who haven't run in the past. Well, Jimmy Brown has been like a Woody Hayes of basketball, you know, off tackle and three yards of dust and forget the passing. No post patterns you're going to see here. But I think the Knicks could use a little bit of that. We've got great speed on this team and young legs. They haven't gone to the line much and they haven't hit any outside shots. It's been Cummings and Ewing, and here's Dr. J with a great save. Two on one, Barkley to Malone. smart defense by Ernie, Ernie Grunfeld that time. He forced the pass and then get right, got right over quickly on Moses Malone to make it a tough shot. You couldn't play a two-on-one any better than that, particularly against a guy like Malone on that side. Julius Irving made quite a play at the other end. Moses Malone, ninth leading scorer in the league. In addition to his rebounding domination the last five, and he scored 51 against Detroit last season. He's had some knee problems. Just a couple of days of practice here. Matty Gukas wants more defense from him this year. Another Nick turnover. And so Philadelphia, matching its biggest lead in this opening period of nine points with three minutes to go, can now move it to 11 with a basket. Three inside to Thompson. No basket in the foul before the shot. And that'll send the Sixers to the line. But first they will call a timeout. 2.57 remaining. Brent Tucker with the personal foul. forget there's an important Big Ten matchup coming up later on CBS Sports. Ohio State and Keith Byers in the lineup take on Big Ten co-leader Minnesota. Both of these teams are five and one. The Buckeyes trail Minnesota and Iowa by one game in the race for the conference title. Stay tuned. This should be a good one. Ohio State and Minnesota coming up at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific right here on CBS Sports. Patrick Ewing in the first period of his first game and of course they'll chronicle when it's all over what he's done compared to the likes of Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain and all the rest and we'll get to that later on and that's what Patrick has done thus far. How do you assess his play Tom? Well I think he's really uh, shown what he's going to be here. The quickness he's got some uh, real fine offensive moves. A lot of people didn't think he would be offensively effective in his first year but I think he's got a lot more offense than people ex would expect him to have. Is Malone taking the measure of him uh, too much so far in this early going? Is Malone uh, giving him a tough go going to him too much? Uh, I think the battle is kind of even right now between the two of them. Uh, Moses Malone, of course, knows that he can get his shot off, or at least he thinks he can. But the Knicks are trying to cover up for Patrick a little bit by double teaming Moses as much as possible. Offensive interference called. 10 point lead. 
offensive goaltending. Rory Sparrow working against Sedale, three. Brent Tucker also in the backcourt. Ewing the center. Reed is helping out on Ewing, along with Moses Malone. Inside Cummings, three. Doubling Cummings along with Barkley. And Pat Cummings on a fall away from the baseline has six. Ewing has six, and the Knicks have 14 in all. See, Grunfeld, number 18, trying to pay, play those passing lanes. Getting a hand on it. Fred Tucker, and now the Knicks come back, trailing by eight. The Knicks using Thompson's man to go in and double-team all the time until he hits a couple dead from the corner. But if he doesn't hit, that's why he's in there in the first place. Tom. Ewing over Malone. Cummings, offensive rebound. Cummings again. Great hustle by Pat Cummings. Rookie Catlett got beaten that time, went for the rebound. It did not block out coming. Traveling call against Charles Barkley. So our first look at Terry Catledge is Cummings might have gotten poked in his eye. The number one draft pick of the Philadelphia 76ers, Terry Catledge at the University of South Alabama, is in there right now. A 20-second timeout called by Hubie Brown. And so we talk about Philadelphia. They've added a couple of youngsters as Mike Saunders deals with Pat Cummings. And we'll tell, tell you about some of those two young players in a moment. Here's the Cummings coming in for the rebound. And you see that uh, Catledge did not block him out quite soon enough. And Barkley doesn't get to him. And an easy hoop. And Cummings is the type of player that is a smart rebounder. He doesn't outleap anybody, but he'll take advantage of what you give him. He has eight points and five rebounds, Tommy. Terry Catledge, along with Greg Stokes, two of the young front court performers who Philadelphia hopes they can work in. And uh, Catledge is a power player who's getting an early chance right here. Well, he's played a lot in the exhibition game. Started to come on towards the uh, the last several of the, of the games. But he's a banger, and he still has to learn an awful lot about the pro game. 140 remaining in the first period. 22 to 16, Philadelphia. Cummings looking inside. Grunfeld going the hoop against Barkley. Basket counts and a foul. So the veterans, Pat Cummings and Ernie Grunfeld, have helped out the rookie uh, Pat Reunion considerably here in this first period. Foul is on Thompson, his second. Uh, Grunfeld has been around a long time. He sets the pick, and, and Barkley lets him get by. And watch now Grunfeld pop out, get the ball, has a good angle on the basket, but they did not double team him. And it was partly uh, the guards for the Philadelphia that Quint felt was allowed to get in there. Here is Kent Bannister. The animal he's called. Second year center comes in for coming. So Bannister and Ewing are both in there at the same time. And Bobby Jones, the veteran, is reporting for Philadelphia. He's in his 10th year. And he did not play in preseason. He had surgery to remove bone spurs. Knicks have run off seven in a row right now. Trail by three. And they'll call Tucker with the foul. Trent Tucker, and that'll be number three on Trent. He's out of the University of Minnesota, top draft pick, and Hubie Brown would really love Trent Tucker to take it to the hoop and go to the line. He doesn't often do <laughs> He's one of those great outside shooters that said, that's my game, and stop trying to slow around my head. I can drive to the basket, but I don't need to drive to the basket. You know, the funny part about it is that Tucker will get in there for rebounds, and that's a pretty tough place for a guard to be, but just doesn't seem to like to drive to the hoop. Brent Tucker went to the free throw line only twice in eight preseason games. <laughs> One of them by mistake, I'll bet. Philadelphia by five. That's the time remaining in the first period. Opening weekend of the 40th NBA season. Patrick Ewing, long range. Eight points for Patrick Ewing. Malone has ten, by the way, and it's a three-point game once more. Well, the Knicks have worked their two offensive people very nicely, Cummings and Ewing, to get back into this game. They double-team Catlin and it's last hit by Grunfeld. So Grunfeld helping to trap the rookie Catledge, who probably hasn't seen much of that. Boy, this Knicks defense is confusing for veterans, let alone rookies. The Knicks have had success in the past trapping Philadelphia. They've been a pesky opponent. Three kind of forced that one up there, but Catledge gets the rebound, and his turnaround shot is good. He's got a good move there. And it's 26-21, Phillies. He's very good in the low post, Catledge. When he gets that turnaround jumper going from 10 feet, you can't stop it. Runfeld. Catledge the rebound. 
He's looked good now, both ends on successive plays. 33 seconds remaining. Bobby Jones drives baseline, and that's vintage Bobby Jones. What a left hand. That was from behind the backboard. Matty Gukas wants more offense from Bobby Jones. Great passer, defensive player, fills the lanes well, but they want some more points from him. 12 on the shot clock. Knicks last year won 24 games. Now they've got Ewing and a lot of injuries. Sparrow hits with five seconds to go. Here comes Sedale, three, two seconds, and the buzzer sounds, no basket. That is the end of the first period here at Madison Square Garden. Ewing has eight, and the Knicks trail by five. Sellout crowd at Madison Square Garden. We haven't heard much of them so far. Nonetheless, Patrick Ewing, with all the hullabaloo during preseason, has had pretty good of a clean first period and no personal fouls. How do you look? Uh, very, very important because that's what teams will probably try and do is get him in foul trouble early, and here he's foul free. But another interesting point is that uh, uh, Hubie Brown is planning on only using eight ball players during the course of this game, which is going to put a lot of heat on Patrick to play a lot of minutes. I think the success of this team early in the season Season will be how much time Bannister plays at that backup center position. Uh, right now, Patrick is back out on the court, ready to start the uh, second quarter. So he's going to have to play a lot of minutes. That's unusual for a young player. I don't think he minds it either. I think he'd like to play 48. He won't last long doing that. Clement Johnson starts at center for Philadelphia. As we begin the second period, Moses Malone leads the game. He has scored 10. Darrell Walker is back in there for the New York Knicks, and Patrick Ewing misses the shot. Catledge going after it. Sedale free. Well, the Knicks have done an excellent job of stopping the Sixer fast break. Yes, they have. They're getting all over the uh, outlet pass and the rebound. Thompson missing, and Bannister, the animal, gets the rebound, and... The Knicks are trailing by five. Their only lead was four to two early in the ball game. Philadelphia at one point had a ten point advantage. They go into Ewing against Clement Johnson. And Ewing now with ten points in the ball game and a pretty good touch from 12 to 15 feet. And he's got more than a jump shot. He's got a couple of moves that he's going to throw on the NBA and they better be ready for him. Here's the trapping defense by the Knicks against some inexperienced people. And they're going to call the 10 second violation against Philadelphia. Turns it over to the Knicks and that's Hubie Brown's trademark. Well, Catledge got caught in the backcourt there. That rookie again looking at this New York trap. They keep you guessing with it. They it appears to have certain openings, and all of a sudden it closes down quickly. A foul away from the basket, and Sedale three knocked Ernie Grunfeld out. And here's Andrew Tony making his first appearance. He's been hobbled with ankle problems, but he has been a tremendous disappointment. Only a shadow of his former self. What happened to this so-called explosive offensive player? Little Cunningham says he thinks that Pat, uh, that uh, Tony has lost the desire to play. Grunfeld misses on top. Sedale three gets the rebound and dribbles through Patrick Ewing. Walker trying to knock it away from behind. Here's Tony. That's the Andrew Tony we once saw score 40 points in a ball game. Well, he would come out with fire in his eyes and play you tooth and nail, and somehow or other, that's gone from his game. Well, there's a man who has lots to prove, Andrew Tony. Tucker. They expect him to hit those shots. And the rebound by Terry Catledge. 6'8", 240 pounds. Which 21 a game and had 11 rebounds at South Alabama. Walker behind Freed, and here comes Pat Ewing out to help. Jones into Clement Johnson. Three on the shot clock, and it's going to be Catledge with a turnaround. Rebound by Grunfeld, and the Knicks play the Sixers tight as a drum. Well, great defense that time. Took away two inside shots. Five-point lead for Philadelphia. Grunfeld coming off the screen. Out of bounds. Philadelphia has it. Remaining in the second period, tight ball game between these two Atlantic Division foes. 
Pat O'Brien here courtside. We'll get back to the game in just a minute. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but the NBA athletes are so athletic, they created their own job hazard. I'm talking about hitting the backs of their heads and their arms on the back of the backboard. This year, all the backboards are smaller. I want to show you a classic example of this. Is Julius Irving a couple of years ago in Denver. He hit his head on the backboard while going up for a slam dunk. This is not the only injuries that uh, players have. A lot of them have jammed their fingers. One player broke his hand in the preseason. So the NBA has taken six inches of plexiglass off the backboard. The players seem to like it. One less thing to worry about. That's class today, Dick. I'll be quizzing you on it later. Back to you. Is it written or is it a verbal quiz? Pat? I'm not sure. I gotta tell you, that's gonna ruin my hook shot. No, I, I nothing, need a bigger backboard. Nothing will ever ruin your hook shot, even <laughs> now. Pat Cummings is back in the lineup for the Knicks. There's the shooting story, but Philadelphia's big edge has come at the free throw line. Sixers lead by five, second period. Sedale three. Andrew Tony already has one basket. Fine pass into Clement Johnson. Patrick Ewing getting a rest for the first time in this game. Played the entire first period. Well, that press defense of the Knicks wants you to take the outside shot. And that time, Tony made sure that they got an easy hoop inside. Good pass to Clem Johnson. Tony's playing the pass into Cummings because Tucker hasn't proven he can hit that outside shot. Cummings battles inside against Clem Johnson. And so Pat Cummings with 10. Ian Ewing each have 10. And Moses Malone has 10 for Philadelphia. Catledge inside. Misses Tucker the rebound. Knicks trying to run here. Philadelphia is back on defense. Walker. Inside foul. Walker is very effective going inside to the hoop. And the foul is on Sedale Freed, his second. One of the things that uh, Matty Gukas was most concerned about as showed up in the exhibition game was getting back against the fast-breaking ball club. That time, uh, the Sixers did get back, but didn't close it down quite quick enough. Here is Darrell Walker, a defensive standout. Despite the fact he didn't shoot 44% last year, was their third best scorer. He's been up and down and has some pretty good flashes at times that brings the crowd out of their seats. I'll tell you, I don't think you've got to consider Darrell Walker an offensive player. You just got to get him out there. He's a, a, a spirited player. He keeps the action going. He's a great defensive player. We're going to give you some college football scores throughout the day. And of course, you know, Ohio State, Minnesota follows our telecast. Big, important Big Ten clash. 32 to 29 with eight and a half to play in the first half. Catledge is trapped. Tony leaving Sedale three wide open. And it's Grunfeld and fouled by Catledge over the top. I don't think Catledge wanted to foul him. Looked like he tried to get out of the way but just couldn't. And so Terry is called with the foul. That's a canny Romanian trick. When you get a forward up in the air, you slip underneath him. Sort of like a pastrami sandwich. Mm. Romanian. No mustard. Oh, okay. 8-10 to go. First half. Walker off Cummings. Turns it over to Philadelphia. Maurice Cheeks is going to come back in the ball game. He's had some tendonitis problems in his knee. In his seven years in the league, has never shot less than 51%. And is really an offensive performer as well as all the rest. And a courageous player to boot. Remember him playing last year with the bad shoulder? Wow. They're playing anything. Turnover for the Knicks. Darrell Walker forced it. Knocks it away. Catlett with nothing but white shirts made a good play as he got away and got it to Cheeks. Tony has hit two in a row. Andrew Tony used to do, and now it's 34 to 29. And the Knicks are trying to make him put it on the floor, and the good up fakes, he's still taking the outside shot. New York Knicks, timeout called by Hubie Brown. They took the Celtics to seven games in the Eastern Semis two years ago, and then with all kinds of injuries, including Bill Cartwright, out all year, fell to 24 and 58. The Knicks starting to make that big climb back today. Well, what's happened to the 49ers? Well, I could go on, but the game will be gone and the fans will be out of here. <laughs> they don't have Louis Orr. That's what the problem is. <laughs> 34 to 29. Ewing and Cummings have shot 9 of 17 between them. Now make it 9 of 18. Still pretty good at 50%. But the Sixers come down with the ball and a five-point lead. Inside. They're going to jump it up. Terry Catledge. 
Grunfeld, two candidates. Grunfeld, despite the fact that he's a veteran, has so much savvy. He's been you gotta be careful. in every play. You know, the Knicks have been doing simply an outstanding job of getting all over the rebounder and making them the, the Sixers delay a count or two and getting that fa fast break started. And the rest of the Knicks are getting back quickly to stop it up the other end. Good Julius. defense by the Knicks. Julius Irving has seven points, all of them from the free throw line. He's in the game. Catlick with a turnaround. The Knicks are blocking out very well. Trailing by five, Philadelphia has had the lead practically throughout. With just under seven minutes to go in the first half. Cheeks in there on Sparrow. That's the way they started today. Irving on Grunfeld. Came off the bench. Cummings. And Hugh Evans blows his whistle. And a Philadelphia foul. Moses Malone, who has seven rebounds and ten points, comes into the ball game. And Clement Johnson goes out. That's the center matchup so far between the veteran and the rookie. Got a nice long nap on the bench there, too, I'll tell you. Long time. Six minutes almost. Cummings. Hits outside. Catlett, by the way, committed that last foul, and Cummings is now the high scorer in the ball game with 12 points. Knicks trapping. Malone, fresh as Tommy says. Goes baseline. Lost the ball. Moses Malone. He has not had a good preseason. But that's not always the barometer. Sparrow hits, so the Knicks have hit two outside shots, something that was sorely missing in the first period, and they've cut the Sixer lead to one. Tell you, it looks to me like the Knicks are giving Sparrow more of a green light to take that outside shot when it develops. You mentioned he had a terrific preseason. Tony, long range, hits, and he's three for three from the field. But Andrew yeah. Tony. He has yet to put it on the floor yet and drive. And that may be what the Knicks will ultimately have to do is force him to drive. He's hitting that outside shot. Except that in the recent past, he wasn't even hitting that. Cummings driving into the hoop. Catledge. I like the way this Catledge battles off the boards. That's his fourth rebound. But he's holding it too long off the rebound. Malone. Just his first game time. <laughs> Irving trying to draw the foul. Look at Darrell Walker. Scrap for it. Is this a playoff game or what, Tommy? This looks like one of those fumbles in the end zone for a touchdown. All those big guys go down and get it. Tommy, when you've been in the league, you try every trick in the trade, don't well, you? Well, there's method acting, and there's acting. Now, watch this. That's method acting from Stanislavski, but the timing was all wrong, Dick. <laughs> I mean, you got to tell Moses your timing was a little bit off there. Gerald Wilkins has come back in the ball game for the New York Knicks, who started a quick forward. As Tommy mentioned earlier, Bernard King, who was the NBA's leading scorer last year, at nearly 33 a game, had surgery for torn ligaments, reconstructive surgery. And he's not here. And uh, Louis Orr, who will be his backup, is unsigned. And so the rookie, Gerald Wilkins, has to start. And he's back in the game after playing briefly. Ernie Grunfeld has done well, however, in reserve. He sure did. And I think Louis Orr would be the perfect complimentary quick forward for Patrick Ewing because he's a good outside shooter. That's the story of the game, 23 to 8. That's the times they've gone on the line, and yet the Knicks trail by only four. Moses, by the way, is 9 of 10 from the strike. Ewing. Blocked by Malone. Yubi Brown wants foul. And Gerald Wilkins is called for the foul. Got him on the arm. The official said no. Malone played him as... He hit him solid. Hit him solid. Hit him solid. Well, well, let's see the replay. Well, let's see if Yubi makes his point clearly enough. And as Moses kind of getting him on the wrist, they could have called a foul. But Moses is Moses. He's got religion, and uh, they forgive him. The Knicks have some foul trouble in places. Trent Tucker has four. Ernie Grunfeld, Darrell Walker, and Gerald Wilkins each with three. The key man for them, Ewing, as far as fouls, only have one. Malone now 17 points, and the Sixers have up their lead to six once again. The Knicks have tied it up at 38. 225 remaining in the first half. Opening weekend, already some surprises. New Jersey beating Boston in overtime last night. Cummings has 16. 
So he is taking on the scoring burden that Hubie Brown wants him to. They are really burning Charles Barkley in that low post with coming. Tony, two-point attempt missing. And Malone is angry at Tommy Nunez as he and Pat Cummings tangled up, and it'll be Nick's ball. Patrick Ewing has really done a heck of a job on knowing when to push and when not to push in this first half. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Dr. J with a steal. He wanted a foul, too, by Butch Carter. That's Gerald Wilkins, who is slow getting up. Irving <laughs> saying everything all right. Julius, like a spry youngster out there, going after the ball. Gerald Carter into Ewing. It nicely, and Patrick has 14 points in the first half. He only has two rebounds in the game, but he's done the offensive work. Stayed out of foul trouble. 46 to 42. I'm surprised the Sixers haven't double teamed down there as much as uh, they normally do. Like the Knicks are doing with Malone, who's fouled again. Malone has made a living from the line. Now Cummings doesn't like the call, and he puts a hand on Nunez. He better watch himself. the real problem a great move by Moses puts it on the floor but now gets trapped underneath little up fake and shoots it on the way down they call the foul on Cummings I believe three on Cummings and so Hubie Brown will give Cummings a rest he has scored 16 points as Pat and has five rebounds and Ken Bannister replaces him uh, normally what would be happening right now if Cartwright was healthy he'd be back in that ball game there's no question, Tommy, that you put Cartwright in there as a power forward along with Ewing and Bernard King were able to come back and they say maybe January, no one knows for sure. Now you've got a team. Malone misses both of them. Speaking of Bill Cartwright, he'll be a guest at halftime. Puts Carter in and out. Loose ball. Mo Cheeks, two on two. Nick's back on defense. Julius Irving is fouled. With 50 seconds to go in the half. Well, UB Brown's ball club has always had an, a rule, no layups on the fast break. And that was a perfect illustration of Carter getting out there before Dr. J could really attack the basket. Four-point lead and Julius Irving, who says, this may not be my last year. I might even come back another year the way I feel. He's 35 years old. You remember he was booed by the Philadelphia crowd in the playoffs against Boston last year, but he shrugged that off. And he looks like he's starting over the way he's playing. He has scored 11 points so far. Philadelphia's biggest lead was 10. The Knicks come back to tie it up. 40 seconds to go at 6 again. Interception by Cheeks. Ewing threw it right in his hand. Cheeks still has it. And now the Knicks do. 3 on 1 for New York. 4 on 1. Sparrow. Good harassing defense by the Knicks. They put this trap on every time you have to take the ball out of bounds, after, particularly after a free throw. gives them time to set up that defense. Four-point lead, and the Knicks are going to make the Sixers work to get it into the fourth quarter. 14 on the shot clock, one-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Philadelphia, let's see. Five seconds to go. Here's the Knicks taking a breakaway. They get out in front and slow the ball down, and now watch them surround it. Good hands that time by uh, Wilkins. And now there's four white jerseys around there. As Cheeks can't find anybody open. There should have been a couple of guys open. And off they go. And Butch Carter gets the hoop. 20-second timeout called by Philadelphia. While we have a moment... The new NBA season promises to be one of the greatest in league history. And next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern, Quest for the Crown, story of the NBA's 40th season. Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, the Twin Towers in Houston. Pat O'Brien will be with us, as he will be at halftime. Coming up, Pat O'Brien. You know, we're talking about Bernard King. Interesting 
While King is working out on his own, he has not yet made an appearance, Tommy, at any Nick practice or any Nick game so far, and I find that a little unusual. <laughs> I do too, because if you're going to be a member of the team, you ought to be a member of the team. You sure his name isn't Howard Hughes? Is there someone out there that knows where Bernard Dark is? King. I'm sure his teammates would like to see it. Four seconds to go, and the doctor tries to get it in. One second, and that's the buzzer. The crowd looking for Patrick Ewing in his first game. Sees Ewing get 15 points. And the Knicks trail Philadelphia 48 to 44. Pat O'Brien coming up at the half in just a moment. And of course, Patrick Ewing starting out like so many of the great ones did. And of course, as the game goes on, we'll show you what some of those other great players did in their very first game. Rory Sparrow takes it to the hoop to start the second half, and it's 48 to 46. Maurice Cheeks in the backcourt. Along with Paul Thompson. Thompson scored three points. Not show the outside shot they expected. Barkley still with only one basket. And Ewing with his fourth rebound. Great behind the back pass. Walker to Wilkins. And the foul. And Julius is idle. Remember that. And the Wilkins took it to the hoop. And that's what Hubie Brown won. Oh, he is a strong move by Wilkins, but Dr. J angles him off. If anybody knows how to cut a guy off at the pass, it's Dr. J, and he does so adequately, but just gets a little contact. At the first foul for Irving, who had 11 points in the first half. Moses Malone led with 17. Pat Cummings with 16, and Ewing with 15 were the Nick High scores. Well, this man at the foul line, even though he's a rookie, could be very effective for this ball club if they started to unleash a real fast break attack that featured more than just layups. Which you know is not going to happen. Which probably isn't going to happen because Yuki doesn't believe in that. He's a mistake coach. In other words, he tries to keep the mistakes to a minimum while other coaches try to force more shots. And now we're worried about the mistakes and turnovers. Good point, though, on Wilkins as they trap Moses Malone. Thompson has a shot blocked by you. And it's saved by Irving. Barkley still with only one basket, and the Knicks running it out. High score, and the Knicks trying to take the lead, and here's Wilkins. Rebound by Malone. Safety. Irving off the glass, no good. Thompson, who played with Milwaukee last year, coming out with it. Inside to Barkley, double team. Ewing might have gotten a hand on the ball, but Barkley with his first field goal of the game, one for five now. Well, they have come out of the locker room and said, get it to Charles Barkley. Darrell Walker, guarded by Thompson. Cheeks trying to go for the passing lane. Barkley out to meet Cummings, who had a red hot first half and keeps it going. 18 now for Pat Cummings. And another tie. Oh, I like a guy like Pat Cummings. He doesn't have those big, broad shoulders. He's got those sloping shoulders. He reminds you of yourself. Yeah. I mean, like anybody can say play it. in the NBA. Come right? out and say it, Tommy. He reminds <laughs> you of Tommy Heinsohn. That would be a great compliment to Pat Cummings, by the way. Yeah, Irving. And Cummings trying to deny Barkley the ball. Thompson with three seconds on the shot clock. And Julius Irving sneaks in and follows it up. And the doctor has 13. But Philadelphia comes back after those deadlocks and takes the lead continually with nine and a half to play in the third. Ewing hasn't gone power inside and Julius Irving called for the foul. So the doctor called for his second foul. We'll be back to the garden after this. A surprise to me, Dick, uh, so far the Sixers have not changed their defensive scheme whatsoever. They're not doubling down on Patrick Ewing, Ewing as you might expect. Steal by Irving. That's the kind of carelessness that sends Hubie Brown walking. Now, right now, Brown is lecturing his bench about how you can't let that happen. Julius Irving out of nowhere. 54 to 50, Philadelphia leads. The doctor has four steals. He's 35 years old, playing like 25. I worked against that in practice yesterday, Dick, on watching Dr. J sneaking out there for steals. Wilkins, Sparrow, short, Malone looking down court. 
Sparrow gets it back on an interception. Ewing, perfect pass inside to Wilkin. Ewing knows what to do on the fast break. Georgetown, that's all they did. He's going to find the open man. And get it to him in the right way, in the right place. Less than eight and a half to go in the third. Philadelphia by two. Sheets fires away. And a loose ball foul. Ball against Thompson. That was the long pass by Moses. Gave him plenty of time to sneak in there and pick it off. You got to get the ball out to the sidelines to make the fast break work. And here's Ewing finds the man beautifully cut to the hoop. Cummings got the pass inside. They try to overplay him. And Pat Cummings has 20. Well, Hubie Brown said we need 20 from Cummings and 20 from Ewing. They got him almost. Sparrow. This is the layup that would have given the Knicks the lead. And it is Philadelphia ball. But the Knicks hanging in with 7.57 to go in the third. And a foul is on Ewing, his second. And that was a real rookie foul, a reach in on a rebound like that. Once a man gains possession, get the ball and head up the court. Barrow on Cheeks, who has only two points in the game. Malone left uncovered. Ewing came out to help, and Malone was left unattended inside. Well, you expect some support defense in the college ranks when that happens, but you can't leave Moses alone underneath. 19 for Malone. Philadelphia by two. They've had six ties in this game. Ewing. Ah! That's been his shot so far. Loose ball coming. Last touch by Cummings. Philadelphia ball, but he has given the Knicks a tremendous amount of hustle in this game. Now they say it was last touch, and now an angry Matt Dukas. When was the last time you saw Matty ever get angry? Matty was always a mild mannered guy. That has changed. There's no question about it. He told me he's got to yell at the players now. He says the mild-mannered approach isn't going to work, so he raises his voice in practice. Because otherwise he'll run a rough shot on me. Ewing goes up, has the shot blocked, and Philly comes down with it. Steal by Darrell Walker. And another tie as the pace of this game is picked up. Well, it looks to me like they are trying to change their defense a little bit. The Sixers getting in and double-teaming Patrick. But they're going to have to do it a lot more. And look at all this defense being played by the Knicks. Trapping. Thompson goes up. Ewing. Cummings, the rebound. Outlet pass to Walker. And Walker will give the Knicks a chance to take the lead. 6.44 remaining in the third, and a chance to break the tie here is Darrell Walker. And the Knicks are getting that defense in gear. You know, it starts to pick up momentum. A couple of steals, all of a sudden they see it working, and they'll try and make even more gambles than they had been previously. So watch out. The Knicks are on a roll. But a couple of missed free throws like that can really turn things off for you. The Knicks with a chance to take the lead. Cheeks behind his back to Barkley. Never have control, and here's Walker. He'll put him ahead now. The Knicks' lead was 4-2. to two. That was the only lead they had until right now. They are going to start to swarm the ball now. The doctor, picked up by Wilkins, yes. throws it away. Patrick Ewing, the back man on the press, is the ideal back man on the press. Blocks everything. That's why you can gamble when you have a guy like that behind you. That's something the Knicks have not been able to do in the past. Under six minutes to go. And a foul against Philadelphia. But let's look at the Knicks defense again. Boy, they're hustling all over the place. They're back on the ball. Look at them jump to the penetration. They surround it. A poor pass that time. Barkley couldn't hold on. Hands on the ball. They may have ended up with uh, Philadelphia shooting 29 fouls, but they're also ending up with stuff like this layup. Three fouls on Barkley and Terry Catledge. The number one draft pick from the University of South Alabama is in the game replacing Barkley. So Catledge is up front along with Irving. Andrew Tony in the backcourt with Cheeks and Moses Malone stays in at center. You know, a good press defense my way of thinking makes your team get aggressive offensively too and 
it's starting to show here for the Knicks. The Knicks have always been able to use that trap effectively, especially during the regular season, Tommy, because teams don't have time to get ready for it. It's in the playoffs. When they see a lot of it, then they begin to solve it. Tony, the Knicks trapping all over the court. Malone overcoming short. Out of bounds. Knicks have it. And the 76ers have not come up with a good shot attempt since the Knicks have put on this trap defense. Dick Stockton and Tom Heitzen, along with Pat O'Brien at Madison Square Garden, the 40th NBA season and our premiere on CBS. Patrick Ewing's NBA debut, the Knicks against Philadelphia. And Ewing has delivered to the tune of 15, and the Knicks leading by three and nearly getting two more there. But a offensive foul, a loose ball foul, called against Pat Cummings, his fourth, and a tight talk ball game with the Knicks leading 59-56. Well, here's where the Knicks will really be hurting. They lose one of the real good offensive people that they have. Bannister is not a good scorer. At this stage of the ball game, they need some offense from both Ewing and Cummings. Yeah, but a lot of people thought Ewing would be deep into foul trouble by now, and maybe Cummings as well, and they've stayed out of it, basically. Tony, who was hot from the outside in the first half, and Ewing has another rebound. That's five. Turns it over to Cheeks. Malone will call the foul. Darryl Walker is in the crowd. And Sparrow had fouled Malone. Boy, when that pass was made poorly, they just turned tail and got right back on Malone. That Darryl Walker streaked back on defense. Animated people like Barkley of Philadelphia, Darryl Walker of the Knicks is the same That's why it's so important to your ball club. There's an emotional lift on there. You know, and they count on emotion to make this defense work. Malone with 20 points. Cummings leads the Knicks with 21. 5.03 remaining in the third period. Knicks lead is down to one now. Philadelphia had a 10-point lead in the first half, but everything was within that 10-point margin most of the way. it took him to get rid of that ball to get the break stop. Cheeks. And Maurice Cheeks finding the open spaces with only his fourth point of the game and the 76ers have regained the lead. Now. And they'll call Cheeks with a foul as they bump heads. Tell me about the break that Philadelphia has to get going. Well, right here, we're going to see uh, Moses comes up with a nice play, the rebound. But in order to get a fast break going, you got to get the rebound and out quickly. And it's one count, two counts, three counts. And before the ball is handed off, and by that time, it gives the white jerseys plenty enough time to get back and stop the fast break. Did Bannister have something to do with that? Yeah, he just gets right on the ball. That's a little coaching tactic. That's one of the ways you stop the fast break, get all over the rebound, or make it a tough outlet pass. When Philadelphia Sixers were in their heyday, they didn't depend so much on rebound, but steals to get their fast break going. Knicks by one with 425 remaining. Julius Serving has seen this trap before. He knows what it's all about. And I'll tell you, they take you right out of your normal offense. Catlitz with a jumper. You don't get Moses in that low post when you start going against this trap defense. Opening close. Cheeks on Sparrow. with 14 seconds to attempt a shot. Bannister will inbound. Wilkins. Irving doesn't want to let him get off the outside shot. They've got seven on the clock. Sparrow challenges the middle. Malone blocks it out of bounds. And the Knicks will have five seconds now to try it. Well, Sparrow went to the left hand, thought that uh, Moses wouldn't go for it, but Moses said, the coach wants me to play defense. Back at you. They've got five seconds. Still five. 351. We're seeing a lot more of the open court Julius Irving, aren't we, in this game? Bannister turned around. Getting position inside was Catledge. Walker. Walker. And Tony comes up with it. Oh, Walker is very tough inside for a guard. Malone with basket hanging at the other end and gets an easy two. He's got now 23 in the ballgame. And Wilkins committed a rookie mistake. He never checked behind him. 
That's why Hubie was pointing to the eyes. You yeah. got to see your man plus the ball. 3.20 to go in the third period. 64 to 61. Philadelphia leads. Out pass. Wilkins to Sparrow. What a pass by Gerald Wilkins. Well, they took the Sixers to task that time. They caught them in their best gamble and overplay and used it against them. Philadelphia by one. We'll have a foul away from the basket. Daryl Walker and Trent Tucker comes in. Walker has his fourth foul, and Tucker, who already has four, has come in the ball game. Ewing has only two fouls, by the way, and there's Pat Cummings on the bench with four. Malone gets inside for too easy. The crowd thought he walked, and so did Hubie Brown. 25 for Moses Malone, taking the scoring burden on his own shoulders. Well, they got him where they wanted him, right underneath the basket. Ewing got caught out of position. Three-point lead. Wilkins using Bannister as a screen. Crashing it is Ewing, and they're going to call Patrick for his third. Patrick Ewing, three personal fouls, and we'll have a timeout at Madison Square Garden. Tommy, at the top of the game, you talked about how Ralph Sampson needed aggressiveness. They weren't sure of it. No question about Patrick Ewing coming in now. They just say, is he overly aggressive? Here was one of his plays. This is good aggressiveness to go on the offensive board to try. A coach never gets mad if you're playing hard like that. And you watch Moses now give it to Stanislavski method again and gets the call. And, and Patrick actually got two players on that uh, little trip for the tip in. But uh, good aggressive rebounding by Patrick Ewing on the offensive board is what this Knicks team is looking for from him. He's a smart basketball player in his first game as a pro. He's done a lot of things around the court, passes, moves around the hoop, moving without the ball that shows that he's well schooled. And I think you have already seen in this short period of time that he's a lot better offensive player than people were led to believe based on his college statistics. Philadelphia has out-rebounded New York, 39-22. to 22. Malone doing most of his damage early from the free-throw line. Now with 27 points. Malone averaged 24 and a half last year, was ninth in the lead. 2.35 to go, a five-point lead for the Sixers. Canister working inside against Catledge. But when he turns those shoulders around, the world gets flung off to the side. Huey Brown said Bannister's asset is as a scorer. James Bailey, who hasn't played, is a better rebounder and a shot blocker. He wants to score today. Well, that's what his problem has been in the exhibition game. Malone, fall away shot. Get up. Get up. Philadelphia's Catledge inside, and he has been an impressive rookie today as well. Uh, he is a banger. They say he comes to practice and he plays hard until he falls down and can't play anymore, and he's showing that here in this game. He has six points and six rebounds, does the rookie Terry Catledge, and we have under two minutes to go in the third. Working against Bannister, the animal. And the animal is at two in a row. <laughs> Out of St. Augustine's College in North Carolina, Division II. He's come a long way to make it in the NBA. 138, you see the clock. Three-point lead for Philadelphia. Remember Bannister last year in the L.A. game? He wanted to take it to Kareem. Give me the ball, I can take it to Kareem. Just as Malone took it to Patrick Ewing right there. 29 for Malone. He has 12 in this third period. Well... Ewing is being very, very careful now and really not even fighting him for position. He has three fouls, is Ewing. Has not been a force offensively. Of course, no one expected him to be that, really. Wilkins. Wild shot, loose ball, and here comes Cheeks. The Knicks get back on defense. They've done a good job against Philly's break today. Tony over Tucker. Rebound, Patlich. Ewing snares it down. Oh, Matty Gukas is really incensed. Thought Catlett got fouled. Traveling call. And Wilkins, and he'll turn it over. Matt Gukas, who starred at college at St. Joseph's in Philadelphia. And his first game that he ever played was here in Madison Square Garden when he played for Chicago. He won that, and the first game he ever broadcast was here in New York. Well, I think he's the right coach for this ball club right now as they try to ring another year out of these uh, older ball players. No big changes. Lucas has been with them before. And on the shot clock, Malone, red hot this period. 31 in the game, 14 in the period. 
and a seven point lead for the Sixers. And Moses can smell when uh, Ewing is starting to back off and be less aggressive because of that foul situation. Ewing Brown only wanted to use eight players, but. Remember, Duke has kept, kept Moses on the bench for about six minutes in that second quarter. It may be starting to pay off here in the second half. Bobby Jones and back in the game. Tony with the last shot. Short. And that'll do it for the third period. The end of the third period. The score, the Sixers, 74 and the Knicks, 67. And we'll return to the Garden after this word from your local station. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at Madison Square Garden with the Sixers who are down by three in that third period now have a seven point lead. Pat Cummings with four fouls but 21 points remains on the bench and Bannister and Ewing are in the lineup at the same time for New York. Yes and uh, they're going to the Sixers are going to have to try and get some inside game but Bannister steps out there. Good defense. Where are the Knicks going to go to get their points with Cummings sitting on the bench. Very effective. To Ewing totally now. That was a question when the season started before the game. Where were the Knicks going to get the points without Cartwright and King and Louis Orr? Walker with three seconds on the clock. Trent Tucker saves it. Three point play by Trent Tucker. And that's why they drafted a number one out of Minnesota. Trent Tucker with his first points. Catledge and Bannister banging in there and we'll have a foul the other way against Catledge of Philadelphia. Offensive foul against the rookie. Three fouls on the rookie from South Alabama. 74 to 70 to score. Cummings remains on the bench with four fouls. Gerald Wilkins at small forward. Walker off the screen in a crowd. Loose ball. Three seconds for Tucker for three again way off the mark. Out of bounds and Philadelphia ball. The Knicks really weren't organized toward the end of that clock. Well, it was a poor penetration move by Darrell Walker. Every once in a while he'll make a move like that. And you end up shooting the ball under the gun. So Dale three started the game as the third guard. Hasn't played all that much as two points back in. And now Pat Cummings returns to the game for the New York Knicks. Bannister commits the foul. And some more offense in Ernie Grunfeld. What is the center matchup in the third period? Shows how Malone can wear you down. Well, he's played a lot more minutes than Malone. And right now, uh, Patrick is going to the bench to, to get a little breathing time. Bobby Jones coming in and the basket counts. A familiar Philadelphia play with Jones cutting for the basket. And it's amazing how you can get layups when Patrick Ewing isn't in the ball game. <laughs> on Ernie Grunfeld. Ewing on the bench has scored 15 as three fouls and has not been a force off either boards, but he has been superb as a passer and had that 12 to 15 foot jumper working early. Ewing did not score in the third period. John Thompson said Patrick has got to really stop being humble and assert himself like the star he is all the time. Bannister. out of bounds. Cummings got a hand on it. Interesting you say about being humble. One of the things that impresses Hubie Brown when we talked to him the other day is how polite Patrick Ewing is. Yep. He's a great kid. Nearly two minutes gone by in this fourth period. Sixers by seven. Now nine. Catlett. Oh boy. He's turning on. Charles Barkley has yet to get back in this ball game and Catlett just kind of taking over that power forward spot. Timeout. And Philadelphia has raised their lead to nine. Where are the Knicks going to get points now, Tom? Well, Grunfeld is in there, Bannister and Cummings, but it looks like they're trying to use Cummings down that low post. They're isolating him. Darrell Walker driving the baseline. Here's a Dale three. Oh, the Sixers have forced Darrell to take some Catlidge. tough shot. Catlidge on the break. Filling the lane nicely, and the rookie with 10 points in the ball game. The Knicks have scored just three points in the last four and a half minutes. And the biggest lead right now for the Sixers, 11 points. 81 to 70 with 9.20 to go in the fourth. Tucker swatted away by Clement Johnson, who's come in from alone. And now Sedale three forcing it. Good tip pass by Catledge in the basket. Counts. And it's Maurice Cheeks on the 
touch pass back to Catledge, who laid it in for the basket and a foul as well. And now Patrick Ewing rushes back into the ball game for the Knicks, as well as Rory Sparrow. Well, here's a, a fast break off of a steal, and Grunfeld's got them all. But Catledge, they lay it back to the fourth man up, and before Grunfeld can get up at him, the basket is in. The Sixers have outscored the Knicks 15 to 3 on this run to open it up to a 15 point bowl. Only three minutes gone by in the final period. Their offense in a Coming this basket counts in a foul. This is the stage of the ball game that the ball would be going to Bernard King, baby. Automatic two time. Bernard King, of course, coming back from that reconstructive knee surgery. No one knows when he'll come back. Here's Andrew Tony back now. People say possibly January. He's been working out and has not been around the Knicks. Practices or games. Cummings on the line. Now one of the things uh, as a coach, when you don't have a great star like Bernard King in the lineup, you really have to find out how to divvy up the shots and how people are going to respond. And when you get in the habit of giving the ball to one guy as much as the Knicks did, that's tough to sign. Steal by Ewing. He's got Walker with him. Should have laid it off. Catledge back. Short missed it all. Sparrow is trapped back there. Grunfeld, and they're going to call the loose ball foul against Catledge of the Sixers. That was one of the, the only time we've seen the open court Patrick Ewing. And that's the quickness of Ewing, the ability to get out there from in the lane. But he now should be giving it off. To Walker, instead he tries to take it to the hoop. Good defense by three. Three. 12 point lead, 83 to 7, 85, 73. Ewing going in against Clement Johnson. Ewing, loose ball, and the Sixers can't save it. Will Ewing go stronger now to the hoop? Well, they, he got good position against Clem Johnson, something that he wasn't getting against Moses Malone, so he may turn in a lot more than he has been for the last several minutes. Was it because of Malone or Ewing? Uh, Malone really makes you move outside. He bodies you up really, really well. Nick's trying to cut it to 10. Runfell looking inside to Patrick. Bobby Jones causes the steal. Sedale three with Tony in the backcourt. Clement Johnson, so Maurice Cheeks, Julius Irving, and Moses Malone all getting a rest. Not to mention Barkley, who's been getting a long run. Hatley. This is it. Here's Clement Johnson on the baseline. And an offensive foul called against Philadelphia. They'll make that a loose ball foul. You know, Catlett reminds me more and more of Barkley the way he's been progressing oh, in this game. He's a quick leaper, too. That's pretty surprising. Ready? One. Now, really gets on that board, and he goes up more than once, too. Two, three times. Five fouls now on Terry Catledge. He has scored 13. Cummings. The basket counts and a foul. Catledge did not go for the initial fake by Pat Cummings. Tony commits the foul on the play, and Cummings now 26 points in the ball game. Cummings has had some big scoring games in his career. Yubi Brown wanted him to get 20 in this game, and he's gotten it. You've got to keep Ewing off the board, okay? But now as the shot is going up, look at him go back out and get him. The shot does go in, but that's the type of concentration you have to have on Patrick Ewing because he gets one quick step and he's flying up there ready to stuff it. So you got to go get him before he makes a move. Hyperextended elbow that Ewing had suffered in that Stepanovich altercation last week being taped up. Meanwhile, Charles Barkley, who's been sitting a long time, and Moses Malone, who's had a sensational game with 31 points, have both checked in. But here comes the press. A 1-3-1, and they give it a different look, so the Sixers will have to start thinking how to defeat this particular press defense. Walker with his fifth personal foul. Darrell Walker with five. Ernie Grunfeld has five for the Knicks. And, of course, Catledge on the bench with five for Philadelphia. Nine-point Philadelphia lead. They were up by seven after three and four at the half. Traveling, called. 
Turns it over to New York. Well, that's what happens when you're on the bench as long as Barkley was. You kind of lose your timing, and he's trying to be aggressive. Take it to the hoop, pick up a foul. But he's all dried up. You know, when the sweat leaves you, it takes a long time to get back into the game. Cummings. He has been the source for points for the Knicks today. 28 points for Pat Cummings. But Hubie Brown said he needed around 12 from the likes of Sparrow and Walker and Wilkins. He got 12 from Sparrow. Malone with a fall away from the baseline and 33 from Moses. Boy, what a tough shot that was. He had a spin away from the double team and it was behind the backboard. How did he make that one? Rory Sparrow. Grunfeld over Bobby Jones. One of the best ways, ways to beat the press is get it out quick off a rebound and fast break. And Barkley held on to the ball. I think Philadelphia's depth is going to be better this year. A long fall away. This is Ewing tips it to Walker. Nearly walked with the ball. Sparrow. One on one against Sedale. Three. Fortunately for the Knicks, they get it back. They don't finish off the breaks that well. But always been their problem. Ewing over Malone. Basket good and a foul. First points for Ewing in the second half. And a timeout with 5.46 remaining. Patrick Ewing. That, coming, that Ewing may be feeling. When you play so much defense, and the way he's trying to play and bang on the boards and people blocking out like they are, it kind of shows up in your offense a little bit. Uh, that's where Bill Russell used to say, I'll take my blow on offense. That's right, and as Hubie Brown says, he came into the league and he had Kuzi and he had you and he had a lot of people giving him some offensive support. So Dale three hits from outside. And the Sixers now lead 88 to 79, a nine-point lead with five and a half to go. But the Knicks have been looking sluggish in the last well, seven minutes they, or so. They haven't used an awful lot of players. They haven't used that second unit press team that they normally do. The Knicks have played as hard as they can play here. What's showing up is the problem that Ubi told us about. Not enough offense. Ewing going in against the Lawrence. And they call Sedale three for the foul coming around from the other side. Sixers are in the penalty, and so that will send Patrick to the free throw line. And of course, Patrick has been an effective free throw shooter throughout his college career. Well, that always is a, a good thing for a big man to be able to do. You know, Moses is that kind of player, too. Uh, Chamberlain, it was an automatic when he got close to the basket. He was such a poor foul shooter that he fouled deliberately because he was better making a dipper dunk than he was two free throws. But when you get guys like uh, Ewing and Moses that can make those foul shots, and Kareem, too, uh, you're, not, you're a little more reluctant to foul them. One out of two for Ewing. Eight-point lead, 88 to, 80, 88 to 80, with enough time remaining. Julius Irving, cross-court to three. Trapping the defense. Half-court version for the Knicks. Run fell all over the dock. They call a lake back late block on Sparrow. It's still Philadelphia possession. Hubie Brown. This is his fourth year with the Knicks. He's coached Atlanta. Ninth year as a pro coach overall. He won a title in the ABA with Kentucky. Irving. Just away. Malone controls. Wild shot by Malone at the 24 second clock. What are you going to do with that? He was falling off the court and a blind shot. Well, he had to take the shot. It was three on the clock. 35 for Moses Malone. Off the screen, Grunfeld. And Moses with the rebound. And the Sixers will keep pushing it at you at this stage if they can get a layup. If not, they'll try and work it into Moses normally. 76ers have been injury-riddled club with Malone and Tony and so forth. But they're showing tremendous poise. Three-point attempt by three, no good, and Barkley bats it out of bounds. Did Mo 
see the basket on the shot? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he did. His Dr. J trying to find him open is kind of a tough pass. Moses has to go all the way out to get it, and the fall away, he ended up in, in Yubi's lap there for an instant. Let's see if he can do that again. Bottom of the net now. 90 to 80, Philadelphia, under four minutes remaining. Tomorrow, I'll bet you five bucks you can do it again. He's been practicing. Ewing in close misses, and Grunfeld is fouled by Charles Barkley. College football scores around the country. A final, the Georgia Bulldogs over Kentucky in an SEC battle. Notre Dame over USC. It's going to be Jerry Faust band smile, 27-0. Florida rolling over Virginia Tech in the fourth quarter. of the Ernie and Bernie show with Bernard King out of action. Tennessee did. Uh, here's where they're going to press again off a made free throw. Nine-point lead, 340 to remaining. Irving going in, finger roll. Stuck through by Barkley. Four points for Charles Barkley, who had a great preseason. In fact, led the Sixers in scoring, averaging over 20. He has four in this game, but other people have picked up the slack, like Malone. Well, Dr. J that time, a great job of getting that ball up and then taking it to the hoop against Ewing. Ewing did not make a move to block it like he was afraid that Moses would get the ball. And that little layoff pass that created that outside jump shot has got Ewing thinking defensively. 3.15 on the clock. Steal by Cheeks. Forget about it. Here's Mo. And follow up by Irving. Runfeld was lucky enough to get a piece of it, and Julius Irving follows it in. And it's a 13-point lead for Philadelphia. Patrick Ewing making his debut, one of the most heralded rookies ever to come in the league. Here are some of the other first games of top centers in the league. Will Chamberlain, 43 points and 28 rebounds. Walton at 24 boards. Patrick Ewing right now has 18 points, six rebounds, and three block shots. He has the fewest rebounds of that group. He'll get more. Rory Sparrow using a screen from Ewing. It's just don't have enough people to present points. And Barkley lost it. Well, those two guys still didn't uh, get those red jerseys. Remember, they were diving on the floor in the first half. Lost the ball. Talked about the rebound. They've been out-rebounded 2-1 to one in this game. Trent Tucker from outside. 76ers, the only question for them is will they be the big challengers to the Celtics that they have been in the past? A lot of people are not sure about that with the bullets improved as they are. Can they one team? Doctor gets a jump shot at Irving now with 19 points. Malone leads with 35. Cheeks and Barkley each with four. Tucker. You gotta like Catlitz though. I think he's a rookie that's gonna make some sort of a impression. Well, he's gonna play hard for you. There's no question about it. Still gonna make some mistakes, but that enthusiasm and effort always counts a lot. Barkley going. In. You think the Sixers will? Miss Clint Richardson in what area? That is a, a, a trade that I think the Sixer players aren't too happy with. Uh, a couple of them mentioned it to us, but uh, Freed may be the guy that can really help. If they've got a healthy Andrew Tony, Freed will be the ideal third guard. Pat Cummings with his uh, fifth foul. As you look at the Nick bench. Knicks go on the road for five games, and that's the amount of time before those games. Bill Cartwright will be on the injured list, and then he's eligible to come back for that last game on the West Coast. If the Knicks don't get back for whatever reason, King and Cartwright or Louis Orr, they don't have any chance of rising from the cellar this year, even with Patrick Ewing. It's just not enough to go around. Well, it's like a Cadillac with four worn tires. Use tires on it. Uh, you've got to have the equipment to bring out the best in Patrick Ewing. Under two minutes to go in this game, 98 to 85. He came to see Patrick. Patrick showed that he's an indeed a poised center. Good All right, that's okay, Ford. Runfeld. Oh, Cummings. And it's going to be Philadelphia ball. 
the Knicks have had a history in many cases of holding teams under 100. They're not going to do that today. The way their offense is with what they have out there, they need to hold teams to 80. Off the foot of Irving. Goes out of bounds. And it's Knicks ball with 122 showing on the clock. I think Cartwright could really be the player that, if he gets back, the Knicks have been under the gun. A lot of criticism here in New York about whether they should have traded him before the even season even started. I think that's just pie in the sky stuff. But who's going to take a chance with Cartwright until he proved that he could play again? Grunfeld with the layup. Don't forget Ohio State and Minnesota. Two teams, five and one, battling to get close to Iowa in the Big Ten. Coming up next, under a minute to go, and Matty Gukas going to have a victory in his first game as a head coach in the NBA. Moses Malone with 35 points. Coming, leading the Knicks with 28, Patrick Ewing with 18, and the 24 second clock expires. The Knicks have tried to make an offer sheet for Albert King of the Nets, and the league thinks that the Knicks are trying to circumvent the salary cap. The Knicks trying to get somebody. Dale Ellis of Dallas, whatever. They're going to try and make it maybe, move. Maybe John Paxson, maybe Terry Tyler. A lot of guys uh, still available that perhaps could help this club. Sedale so three with the foul, and Trent Tucker will go to the line. I can't understand why they haven't signed Louis Orlo. That, to me, is uh, that should have been kind of done. If you're planning on supporting Patrick Ewing, that should have been done during the summer, I would think. You, uh, perfect player to compliment Ewing. Outside shooter, good defensive player. You know, used to playing bigger than he is. A skinny kid like Roy would play power forward, played against the likes of McHale, used to banging, and yet they haven't signed him. There's not much you can do about Bill Cartwright, and certainly Bernard King you couldn't do anything about. They could have done something about Louis Orr. What about looking at Philadelphia getting off on the right foot in this game? Do you think that uh, off of this game that they can challenge Boston as, as much as they have in the past? Well, what does it depend on? They hung in with the Celtics last year until the tail end of uh, the year when the age started to show itself. Injuries, what have you. That's the problem. Matt Cummings has fouled out of the ball game. He scored 28 points. His career high was 34, but... Cummings gave Hubie Brown and the Knicks everything they needed from their power forward Cummings today. Well, he's an ideal power forward to go with uh, Patrick as long as you can get somebody in there to also bank. Uh, he can hit that outside shot, and he showed today against uh, Barkley that he also could get some inside points. Moses Malone goes out of the ball game, or is out of the ball game. He scored 35 points. How do you assess Patrick Ewing's debut, Tommy, at this point? I think it was uh, a very successful debut. Uh, they just had to rely too much on him to do too many things. What are the things you liked about him? His, his uh, eagerness, he got up and down the court, some shot blocking, intimidation, some good offensive moves, a lot of good things. Tucker, long range, misses. Barkley the rebound. What do you think you'd like to see him do more of as his career goes on? Get on the boards a little bit more. He, he waits until the ball is up and moving before he goes for the position. Julius Irving, looking like a spry chicken out there. The game is over. The Philadelphia 76ers beat the New York Knicks in the opening game, 99 to 89, and it's underway as Ewing and Julius Irving say hello to us.